Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we'll hear from a singer-songwriter, Josie Nelson. But first, our guest joining me now is uh, from Grand Forks, author and motivational speaker, Missy O. Missy, thanks for joining well, us thank today. Thank you for having me. Well, you're here today to talk about uh, a book and some different mm -hmm. things about what you do. But first, tell the folks a little bit about yourself and where you're originally from. Well, I live in Grand Forks, North Dakota right now, and I'm from Bismarck. And um, I've been speaking for over 10 years now. We have three kids, and I'm married, and yeah. Okay. But then how did you become a motivational speaker and an author? Well, it's a long story, actually, but I was a cosmetologist for 21 years. Mm -hmm. And I would have my clients coming in, and they would be oh, down and depressed. And then by the time they left, they were happy and wanting to send their family members in to be encouraged as well. And from there, I had people asking me to go and speak to their groups. And business um, managers wanted me to come in and speak to their employees about how I loved what I did and how to share that. And so from there, I started speaking more and more and started really looking into it what this all meant and from there I became a trainer and a coach. Hmm. So, a trainer yeah. and a coach, okay. Well, uh, you know, t tell us about what is it you really do, who do you speak to, uh, and what is your message? Right. I speak to a variety of groups. I speak to kindergarten classrooms, nursing homes, and everything in between. And what I find is I really take time to take a look at what my clients need. If it's an association or a business group, if it's an annual meeting, if it's a group of kids that need motivation, or if it's a team that needs help on communication, I go in and listen to what their specific specific needs are and then build a platform around that. Okay, all right. Well, I understand you also have a radio show as yes, well. Yep. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, I've been doing that for about six years now and I interview people locally and nationally that are making a difference with their lives, either with their gifts, talents, and abilities, special experiences they have, or knowledge that they have. And so I bring the guests on and they're able to share their story, quite like this, mm -hmm. and really talk about the difference they're making and then people can either subscribe to what they're talking about or really dig in and find out more about themselves as well. So it's inspirational, but it's more so it's on um, helping people realize that who they are makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you said you, uh, you have guests locally and nationally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what kind of guests do you have and how, how do you find them or do they find you? It, it all depends. Sometimes their publishers try to find different ways to get them on the air and things. Um, Heaven is for Real, I've interviewed them. Um, a lot of the different ones I've interviewed have um, national stories. And so from there it's national. But then local people, maybe someone that survived cancer. It might be someone that has developed some kind of new way of doing things. It might be someone that has an amazing story that they want to share. Um, so that's locally and nationally, some hmm. different people. Yes. Okay, all right, well good. Well, can you tell us about your website? Is it The Open Mind? Yep, The Open Mind is spelled the O-H-E-P-E-N-M-I-N-D, <laughs> so it's spelled with my last name in there. And really it's a resource, it's a place for people to come to see some of the different programs, some of the different things that I do for companies, for groups, uh, if it's associations, they can see we like this part of one of your trainings, but we also like this part. And it gives them an idea of some of the things that I can do for them, so it helps them to have an understanding when we come together. These are some of the projects I can work on with them. Mm -hmm. Well, while we're on it right now, yes. uh, what, what what's the name of the website? I mean, how do you find the website? Yep, it's the o h e p e n m i n d dot com. The open mind dot com. Okay. Uh, so, what does a personal coach really do? Mm -hmm. What I have found for myself is that every type of coach is completely different. Uh, it really is important that when you are looking to find a coach, that you find someone that's going to listen to what your needs are. The coach in the business world, how I've been trained, is that the coach doesn't have the answers. The coach knows which questions to ask to help propel you forward, to help you have insight into what you know that you can do, but sometimes we get stuck. We don't know how to move forward. And a lot of my clients that are um, coaching clients I work with, they are so busy that they have so many things coming at them and they don't know what to do. Have you ever had that where you're just, there's so many different directions and things you can go. So what I do is help them sit down and organize and prioritize what they want to do and asking the questions to help them get them going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well now here, John Maxwell trainer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I read that. What is, what is that? What is that about? Well, uh, John Maxwell is the number one leadership 
coach. He's number one leadership business person in the industry. And he has formed a team of people like myself that go out and do the work that he has done over all these years, use his resources, and really help to educate and train the business world on, and also the personal world of you know moms and dads on how to live their lives to the fullest, live their business lives to the fullest. He is a um, trained minister in the ministry, but he also goes into the business world as well. And so as a trainer and coach of his, I have a team of people all around the world that I work with, but then I also am trained myself to work specifically with what I am trained to do. Yeah, with that said, oh, yeah. you said you've been doing this, I think you said about six years. Um, ten, ten, ten years. years. Yep, yeah, yep. six years mm -hmm. on radio. Yes. Ten years. Did you find John Maxwell before or after you started doing this? Well, John Maxwell is just, oh, he's always been a mentor of mine. Okay. And uh, some respected people that I have approached me and said, Missy, they would like to visit with you because they know who you are. And, and so then I visited with them and have been working with him. So I've been using um, his material to train myself and to grow myself, but then I had the opportunity to work with them and be able to now utilize the material to be able to help others. And that's what my goal in life is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, some people well are, are sort of suspicious of motivational mm -hmm. oh, speakers. Yes, yes. You know, the, the, some horrible things, I guess, or different things. Are, people are asked to walk on hot coals right. or <clears throat> the, uh, the infamous uh, sweat lodge mm -hmm. incident in mm -hmm. Arizona. Understanding you're not like that, but uh, should people be suspicious of uh, who they're listening to? I think anytime we take time to listen to someone for any reason, we should really take time to listen to what their message is first before we start to buy into what they're doing. But especially if you're bringing someone in to talk to your team or to work with an association or a group, you really want to know the background of who the person is and what direction they want it to go. Uh, when I'm speaking with people, I find out what their needs are. It's not about me. It's about what I can do to help them. And so adult learners, when they're trying to learn, they want to be able to utilize the information right away. They don't want to have to learn whole new computer systems, right? They want stuff they can utilize right away. But people come together for two reasons. It's camaraderie and to learn something new. And it's my job to help them learn new things, but also to bring the group together to help them to realize that the group as a whole is making a difference. And that's what I love to do. So it's really me taking time to sit down and figure out what their needs are and how I can fill those needs. What problems, what situations they have coming up in the near future that they foresee and can I help them and will I help them in that direction? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why do some people need motivation in their lives? I think that we all as humans come to a place where we're tired, we're drained, we're, we're overworked, we have stressors, all those things. And it's so important, just like, it's just like eating. You need to be refueled. And the way I look at it is if you have fluff, that's motivation, that's funny, it's in and out, you know, it's just a good time. But if you have solid information that you can take with you to work with you in the future, that's what's important to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let, let's take a moment here then and and talk about your book, uh, the Yukans and mm -hmm. their big adventure. Yes. Uh, how did you get started with this? Well, I have been speaking, like I said, to young groups and all the way up to nursing homes. And I found that when I went to kindergarten classrooms and I asked kids, you know, what do you want to do and who do you want to be? I couldn't answer their hands fast enough. It's teacher and doctor and lawyer, all these different things. And by the time I got to fourth grade and I asked kids the same questions, what do you want to do and who do you want to be? They would start to lower their heads and they'd start to not want to answer that question. And I found there was a gap there that where kids start to, they start to realize that they can't be superheroes flying through the air. They, they can't um, do some of the things that some of their friends can do. And they, they, they find that there's a lot of can'ts. And I'm here, little kids saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, that starts to happen in the third, fourth grade. And so I wanted to fill that gap and help kids realize that who you are makes a difference. And it's who you associate yourself with and how you spend your time creates your story. So that's how it's, this all came about. Now you're me mentioning uh, well, a young age group. Mm -hmm. So who who is the book geared for? What age group? Yes, it's um, K through fifth grade. And when I say that, people say, "Well, that's a huge range." But the writing is fourth, fifth grade. 
But what happens is fourth and fifth graders, they read the book and then they're able to mentor it to younger kids. And so the younger kids love that. And it's sometimes the first time kids are hearing in kindergarten, first grade, concepts of teamwork and being nice and polite and the things we say make a difference. So it's geared um, writing wise for fourth and fifth grade, but then it travels there, but go throughout the, the ages. But what I found is sixth and seventh grade teachers tell me, Missy, the kids that are struggling um, with reading, this is a really good for them in that age because they really get the concept of teamwork and, and believing in yourself, but they're, they're slower at reading. So this is, again, it's it, what's really interesting is how many business people say, Missy, this is exactly what happens at work too. So <laughs> business people say, you need to read this. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Well, and you say that, and you're going to the young uh, children uh, at Prairie Public, our research shows that mm -hmm. you learn to read to about the third grade, and after that, you read to learn. Uh-huh, love that. So, so a lot of that goes on. Love but, that. So, so you do then go to school and read in school? Right, I go to schools and I actually have schools out in California and Arizona and out on the East Coast, it's in Canada. But um, the kids out in California, what's been really neat is their teachers have been asking them questions about, you know, what do you think of the book or what do you think about the UCANs? And the kids are writing questions to me and then I do video blogs back to the kids in California so that they can interact back and forth. It's been a lot of fun. Oh, wow. Well, then tell me, explain exactly how is the book utilized and then what, what you said California, how many states are you in? Uh, it's in quite a few states. I have a few states left to get, but um, it's in, like I said, in Canada and it's, I've been talking with some people in Australia uh, to get the book over there. It's, the, the book is just an amazing tool that the, can I talk about what the book is? Absolutely. So Absolutely. the children in this book, the UCANs, they go on a journey and on the journey they realize that they have to use their gifts, talents, and abilities, but also they find that they can't progress within their journey until they utilize their friends' gifts, talents, abilities, and it's teamwork. And there's some negative Nellies in there that try to pull them down and say it's not going to work and try to take them off course. But then there's also some could could have been shoulda, woulda, and oughta. And it's in life, right? We should have done this, we would have done this, and they have a lot of hesitation. But their friends help to guide them. So the book is a chapter book, and there's pictures, colorful pictures in there. And at the back of the book is a guide that teachers or parents, yeah. mentors can go through either while they're going through the chapters or they can do it on their own or they can also do group projects with the questions. So it's utilized so many different ways. People say, you know, Missy, how do people use this? I want people to use this book, what works best for them. Yeah, but and you talked about uh, young people, but then you mentioned uh, it can work in adult companies yes. also. Yes. To, to well, you. how many times do you hear where people have been working together for years, oh, we should have done that, or we could do that, but oh, I don't know if it'll work. And so there's hesitations there, but then if you work together as a team, it's amazing what can happen. And I think that um, it's it's funny how people think it's a light read, but they get a lot of insights from it too, kind of like a children's movie where you get some insights and things. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, can you talk about some of the lives that uh, you've impacted? Uh, if, what for me is just amazing is when people come to me and I found that I work with my clients for about two to three months and then they go away for a little while and they come back again and what happens is people get to places where they um, they're excited about what they want to do but then they like I said they get stuck with all with where they're at and they want to move forward or they um, have so many things going on and I love helping people have breakthroughs to find what's truly important to them and letting go of all the other things because we can get so bogged down and so for that it's when I see my clients just get so excited and inspired by what they're doing and are able to move forward and that's what's just amazing to me or if they have fears that they have and breaking through those fears and finding out where those fears come from because we have limiting beliefs within ourselves and if we can break through those and find out where they come from, it's amazing how we can pull forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, do you vary your message depending on the group, if you're talking to a group mm -hmm. of people? Mm -hmm. And again, what kind of, kinds of groups do you, uh, do you go speak to? Uh, associations I speak to a lot, um, annual meetings, I do a lot of coaching and training with those types of, uh, in that arena, but I also do mastermind groups where I bring people together from different professions and we go from there, we, we learn a certain subject, we work through a certain subject and so for each group when I go to like say an annual meeting or an association, I want to find out what their needs are and what they foresee that they want people to do while they're at the meeting 
and what they want to be as a result, like you talk about motivational speaking, is it is it worth it? And I want it to be where people take the information and are able to utilize it right away and know how to do it. I try to equip people and then connect them with resources and then empower them and that's where it comes in with the uh, motivational part, but more so training and speaking and coaching, yeah. Okay, th that question was really for like groups, yep. but then when you deal with an individual as a okay. coach, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned this a little bit, you, you have to uh, vary your message and your approach depending on the circumstances, I guess, of that person's mm -hmm. life. Can you talk about mm -hmm. that some? Well, th what happens is people come to me and we sit down and we figure out what, what their issues are, where they want to go, where they have been, and what they want to do in the future. And sometimes what I find is that people, in have you ever heard of of people saying, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, but it's a lot of uh, good intentions. Mm -hmm. And so I help people move forward. And so knowing which questions to ask people to help them move forward, every single person is going to be completely different. And so guiding them in the direction of what they need and where they want to go and then moving them forward. So each question is geared with the the intent of moving people forward so everyone is completely different if that makes sense well it yes. makes a little sense but mm -hmm. you know when, de when you're dealing with individuals and mm -hmm. i think about uh, all of us need motivation from uh -huh. time to time and uh -huh. different things yes. motivate a person mm -hmm. and how how much does it how long does it take you how much do you work because i mean depending on whether you've lost someone in your mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. or work's getting you down or whatever mm -hmm. uh you know, how much do you have to how much time do you have to spend with somebody to to really get into that right my clients we usually work for an hour the minimum or to up to two hours and so it depends on how willing they are to open up to an idea or to really work on themselves sometimes people can um, be stuck and they have all the right answers and so when people are more open to things that's where it um, makes it a lot faster and it w works in the progress but what ends up happening is sometimes people say I want to work here but what they find is it's not just in this area it's in several other areas so we take our time and that's what's so important because people today they want quick answers right here right now today so really taking time for yourself to stop and figure out what we need to do and asking the questions of what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? And digging deeper than the surface level questions. Mm -hmm. okay. do, uh, do you like things like uh, TEDx and events mm -hmm. like that? I love TEDx. I, I go on there and especially if I have some free time, you know, people say, Missy, you're reading all the time, you're working all the time, and, but I just absolutely love it. I love going on there and learning from others because they're quick snippets that you can pick up and people, that's something I talk about different networks that people have. There's information, referral, and support networks. And if you can have a strong information network, you don't have to have all the answers. We shouldn't, we can't though today. It's, there's things are happening so fast that we have to have networks of information. And I've found that those TEDx stories and the um, information they share, it helps me learn as much as I can from s different sources of information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, so do, do people find you? Do you find people? How do, how do you make the connection? You know, I speak to a lot of groups, like I said, associations, and from there they hire me to speak at different groups. I do a lot of speaking to, in the community. I have my um, website do, and also things like this are great. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> well, I guess finally, if people want to get a hold of you yes. or get a copy of yes. your book, mm -hmm. you know, where can they go? Who can they contact? They can contact me on the website, theopenmind.com. Mm -hmm. It's the O H E P E N M I N D dot com, or just Google Missy O. Well, yeah. Missy O, thanks so much Thank for joining you. us Thank today. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Stay tuned for more. Josie Nelson is a singer-songwriter who uses her personal experience to channel her music and lyrics, and she plays a mean ukulele. Something about you that I loved so very dearly But you had a way of making me so sad And I desperately wanted it to work I tried and tried, but it just hurt Giving you everything I had And I tried to point out typos So we could correct them But we seemed to go around Over and over again Know how I Try to make things right So many times I've turned the page but It feels like we never change I have tried to keep you by 
my side But now upon another look I've realized it might be time to close the book And the story of us feels like a never-ending conflict Only problems, no solution, no conclusion, resolution Just confusion, and I think there comes a time we just need to see every story doesn't have an ending from our dreams oh i've tried to point out typos so we could correct them but we seem to go around over and over again oh how i've tried to make things right so many times i've turned the page it feels like we never change i have tried Keep you by my side, but now upon another look, I've realized it might be time to close the book. Oh, 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 oh just close the book. And there are good times that make it hard to leave. Sometimes what you need don't feel like what you want. But I need to know what is right for me And another book might be where I belong How will I ever know if I'm not willing to move on? I have tried to make things right So many times I've turned the page It feels like we never change And I have tried to keep you by my side But now upon another look I've realized it might be time to close the book Oh, 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 oh Just close the book Oh, 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 oh And now upon another look I've realized it might be time to close the book Tears run down her face as she walks away Her friends don't want her and tell her that she can't stay So she finds a table further away And sits there all alone with her lunch tray I wonder what it's like when she gets home And I wonder if she thinks she's all alone Wonder if she knows she's beautiful I wonder if she knows she's really loved And I wonder if she feels like she's enough Sometimes I wonder about her you can tell that she's a little shy She can barely talk when she walks by And it's easy, easy to see why You can see the lonely in her eyes I wonder what it's like when she gets home And I wonder if she thinks she's all alone Wonder if she knows she's beautiful I wonder if she knows she's really loved And I wonder if she feels like she's enough Sometimes I wonder about her It's not fair how they judge, cause life can be rough And we've got enough problems alone And we're all a little insecure Wish that she'd find the way to a better place Where she looks into the mirror And knows that she's worth it And knows that she's perfect I wonder what it's like when she gets home 
I wonder if she thinks she is alone Oh, I wonder what it's like when she gets home Man, I wonder if she thinks she is all alone Wonder if she knows she's beautiful I wonder if she knows she's really loved And I wonder if she feels like she's enough Sometimes I wonder about her Oh, sometimes I wonder about her Well, that's all we have on Prairie Post this week. And as always, thanks for watching. Funding for Minnesota Legacy Programs are provided by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public.